Bitcoin halving happens every four years, and 2024 is one of those years. Well, the next halving takes place today, and joining me now to talk about it is the CEO of Core Scientific, Adam Sullivan. Uh, Adam, welcome. Thanks for having me on. How big is this halving event for the cryptocurrency industry? It's a, it's a big year. You know, it's, it follows the leap year, but you know, every four years, this is a really seminal moment for the Bitcoin mining industry as a whole. Um, it, it brings a lot of machines offline. It makes a, uh, a challenging event for a lot of Bitcoin miners out there. And so it takes a lot of preparation. And there's a lot of discussion around it right now, especially it's the next big news event in Bitcoin this year. You know, we had the ETFs at the beginning of the year, and now we have the halving, both of which uh, can cause significant price movements in Bitcoin. Interesting. So what exactly does it mean for Bitcoin miners uh, like Core Scientific and others? Yeah, so it means right at block eight, 840,000, which is the next halving block. So halvings happen every 210,000 blocks. A block occurs every 10 minutes. And the current block reward is 6.25 Bitcoin. Well, when we hit block 840,000, we go to 3.125 Bitcoin per block. And so it reduces our revenue significantly the moment the halving occurs. Interesting. And what are your predictions for how the halving will go today? It's going to be interesting. You know, there's been a lot of discussion that this could be a Y2K moment uh, for Bitcoin miners. Um, it's, a, it's a really dangerous kind of time period uh, for a number of different reasons. People are moving their machines around. They're moving their hash rate around, which is your compute power being applied to the network uh, amongst different pools. And so there's just a lot of things moving around today. And uh, it's, you know, it's an interesting time period, though, to go through because we haven't really had a halving event where we've had institutionally scaled Bitcoin mining companies. What does this mean for the price of Bitcoin? Well, if you follow the previous halvings, you know, generally after the halving, there's a time period in which you know, Bitcoin remains relatively flat or potentially down, but it, it generally tends to go higher over the long term, over the next 12 months. And so there's a lot of, I would say, discussion around how much higher could we go. I think you have to take a look back, though, and say, did the ETFs already allow for this run-up to happen, or are the ETFs going to enable a larger run-up to occur in a post-having environment? Interesting. Now, in terms of challenges or changes that this would create for the industry, what would those be? Yeah, the main changes are mainly around locations. Uh, so there's locations all over the world right now that are mining Bitcoin in almost every single country. And so certain areas and locations where power costs may be higher, those are locations where in a post-having world, there's not going to be a, a profitable Bitcoin mining operation there. And so you're going to see a lot of machine movements. You're going to see a lot of facility fails. So in the data centers where we operate, many of those facilities will end up getting sold by other companies to larger companies. And there's just going to be a significant amount of consolidation. But over the long term, you know, in 2028, as our next having, you're going to see a lot more decentralization across the network in terms of smaller sites finding low-cost power opportunities. Mm -hmm. I see shares, of course, scientific up about 2% today, $2.94 a share. So something that we can alert our viewers on here. Uh, but I'm just curious, in your own words, Adam, as to how your specific mining operations might differ from other comparables in the market. Yeah, absolutely. So we have seven facilities across five states. We're one of the most geographically diverse companies. And we have a very active strategy on our facilities and operations management. So, you know, our facilities are located in multiple different with multiple different utility providers. That provides us with flexibility to be able to move machines around our facility base versus having to sell them off and move to and buy different machines. And so that's something that allows us to be a lot more flexible post having where we can participate and continue profitability across our portfolio without having to do any major machine sales or machine purchases. How would you respond to concerns, Adam, that the declining block rewards could potentially destabilize the economic incentives underlying Bitcoin security in the long term? Yeah, there's a great example of this. Back in 2021, uh, the Chinese government banned Bitcoin mining. You immediately saw a drop off of nearly 40% of the hash rate on the network over the course of about a month time period. There was no delay in blocks. There was no, uh, the security was still extraordinarily strong. And today, the amount of hash rate on the network, it's impossible to break. It's actually more profitable to participate in the Bitcoin network than it would be to try to break Bitcoin at this point. 
And so the stability and long-term security of Bitcoin cannot be called into question anymore. How would you interpret some of the recent price movements uh, that we've seen with Bitcoin and what it might mean for the broader market? The movements in Bitcoin the past, I would say, four months have been really interesting to watch. You know, it's, it's definitely changed our industry a bit in terms of profitability. Um, but in the broader industry, uh, you know, we're seeing, you know, the Hong Kong ETF, Bitcoin ETF potentially coming into play. And I think what you're going to see over time are institutions continuing to move into Bitcoin as it performs well. Because once one institution outperforms another because they had Bitcoin in their portfolio, that's going to cause more institutions to want to hold Bitcoin. And now they have the capability to. We have the ETFs that will allow for large institutions to be able to participate in the Bitcoin network. And I think that's going to cause that major shift and that major move to making a large percentage of uh, the portfolio allocations moved into Bitcoin. And now large, you know, today, I would say that's probably three to five percent. But who knows where it could go in the future? What are your thoughts, Adam, on some emerging new technologies and protocols on the network um, like Ordinals and the BRC20 tokens? You know, I would have to say it just shows how exciting Bitcoin is again. What we saw was a lot of early Bitcoiners move to actually be developers on other blockchains. Now what we're seeing today are those people come back to the Bitcoin network and want to develop on Bitcoin. What that means for everyone in the network is that there's going to be long-term health, long-term stability, and long-term growth in this network that doesn't just happen from price. It happens from more people wanting to build on Bitcoin. And so this is a huge bullish signal from my perspective that you know, the, the health of the Bitcoin network is very strong. All right, Adam Sullivan, CEO of Core Scientific. Uh, Adam, thank you so much.